Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and I wanted to show you a sample of the stuff that I got while I was at US Max 2023 in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I think you'll really appreciate all the different samples that I have to show you. So these are all samples, folks. So let me show you what we got here. So this is fun. So PCGS put this sample out just for the people who attended the counterfeit lecture. And so that was cool. I'm glad I attended that. I learned a lot and it was a fun time. This is cool. So when I got to the show, actually these four samplers were hand, samples were handed out. And there is, of course, a sample from each of the main grading services here, CAC, NGC, PCGS, and Annex. And, uh, you know, someone pointed out to me that the CAC one is like uber super rare because it's their only foreign coin that they've holdered to date. So I found that to be really interesting. So here you go. You've got uh, a little bit more here on the Annex holder. A little bit more information about the show, I should say. US Max 2023. So they just get big bags full of these. I've, I've had big bags of all of these coins. You get big bags of the coins and they put them in. The holders, uh, I will say the Libertad, the Liberty uh, Mexico label is pretty nice looking here on the NGC holder. So, of course, that was cool. I'm like, it's always fun to get stuff that uh, stuff like that. Um, but I did have fun shopping, looking at stuff. I bought a bunch of stuff that is going to be, um, you know, all different price points. So that was cool. And this I found really exciting. So this is a Chilean 50 centavo uh, piece, 1853 Santiago Mint. And um, from the SS Central America. So this has a bird on it on the front here. You got your, there you go. But you can see all the uh, very, very heavy water damage on this coin. I thought this was super cool. Uh, and, you know, I don't see as many of the foreign coins that came up from the Central America. There's the 50C. And so I was excited to, when I saw that. I'm like, that's fun. I'm going to pick that up. And I bought a bunch of very uh, common, inexpensive stuff that I just thought, I like stuff like this. A lot of these little slabs here are going to be in the $50-ish price range. Just just cool foreign coins. So Timor, Timor, it, you know, these are Portuguese coins, but of course they're actually from one of Portugal's uh, protectorates. Is that the term we would use here? There's a, the 50 cent piece and then centavos. And here's the 20 centavos. Also, really cool designs on these. And these are just different sizes. 1970. So you've got the 50 and the 20. And then I thought there was another one in here. There probably is. It'll pop, it'll pop up. How cool is this, though? I mean, this is from 1926 from Monaco. And uh, I always like the designs on these. So I just consider it kind of fun to have some of these relatively inexpensive coins from the 19th century from... Uh, just kind of all over, whatever catches my eye, really. 1937's Fran French uh, 25 cent piece here. Look at that. In MS65. Cool coin. I mean, it's got a hole in it. Liberty, equality. 1937. And just a lovely, lovely coin. All right, what else we got here from the from the uh, inexpensive pile? These are cool. This is Ethiopia, 1923. Sky, I'm trying to remember if this is aluminum or white, like a like a nickel. I think this one's like a nickel on this guy. I always like those coins, uh, Ethiopian coins with the lion on them. Thought they were really pretty handsome coins. Oh, here's the uh, the last uh, Timor piece. This is the two and a half Escudo. Two Escudo 50s, two and a half Escudo. 
MS67, undoubtedly a top pop. I say that now, but <laughs> I should probably check before I say things like that. So uh, next up, I have something that is like was super cool. I was like, oh, I got to get this. So this is good for 10 cents in trade. A -A -A -R -R -C. A -R -R -C. Good for 10 cents in trade. ARRC. So for those of you who are not familiar with ARC, it is um, the Alaskan Rural Rehabilitation Corp. These coins were or tokens were nicknamed Bingles. And this is a MS62 graded 10 cent piece. So, you know, the 1930s were fascinating. There's an entire town in Arizona named Coolidge because of a president that tried to create farming there and just, hey, let's move there from the Midwest and let's try something here. So um, the same thing happened back in the 30s where they tried to move all these people from the upper Midwest, Michigan and Minnesota, Wisconsin, to Alaska. And they're like, here you go. They took like 35 families or something like that. It was a small amount and they gave them all 40 acres. They said, go farm in the 1930s. Just go, you know, go to Alaska and survive. Of course, it didn't work out so great. But they, I think they only made about 5,000 of these guys. And uh, just really interesting piece. This is, guy is uh, around 200 bucks on that really fascinating piece of history. So they had good four tokens that were made up just, just for the colony. And they had their own colony. Colonial America, 1935. The 30s, there's all kinds of fascinating tokens out there from, from the 1930s. And uh, just really fun fun pieces of history all around on that stuff. Uh, 1907, here's an actual penny, not worth one cent, but I'll tell you this, uh, 1907 Great Britain, MS-63 Brown. As always, my uh, I'm reminded when I look at coins that, you know, there's the grade on the holder and then there's like how the coin looks, which is two different things lots of times. Uh, this coin is pretty cheap too. This is, I think, about a $60 or $70 coin. I really enjoyed the overall color palette on that bad boy. Speaking of color palette, so this is one I had never had before. And um, this token, and also, uh, although it says it's brass, it shows like a, more like a copper coin would with the light and the color. See this, you can get that brass look and feel, but uh, you know, that, that purple is cool. So one of um in <laughs> so this is what's called a satirical token for those of you who don't know what satire is welcome to my channel inseparable friends to elba <laughs> well in case you didn't know that's napoleon and he's riding a donkey backwards being pulled by the devil to elba this is an 1814 Great British piece, The Feet of Napoleon. And, um, you know, no hard feelings, buddy. We conquer to set free Empire of Russia, Emperor of Russia, King of Prussia, Marquis Wellington, Prince Schwarzenberg, I see a Schwarzenberg's as big as mine. March 31, 1814. Also, for what it's worth, this is a couple hundred dollars on this bad boy. Um, what is what is the term? Anagram? No. That's not the term. Anyways, maybe it's anagram. The longest anagram I know, I'm going to use that term. Y'all y'all will correct me, is... Um, when a word is the same forward and backwards, so like radar or a race car, Abel was I ere I saw Elba. I just I only bought this token so I could say that out loud. Abel was I ere I saw Elba. That was uh, what Napoleon said when he went with the devil, <laughs> not down to New Orleans, somewhere else. So this is a fun little piece from uh, Afghan. And uh, with or without wigs, Afghan's a cool place. And so this is actually... Kind of fun because I uh, 
I bought it because the date's wrong. So this actually should be like from the 1950s and it says 1919. You know, that's not a big boo-boo. You know, it's actually a relatively small boo-boo, but I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, just a little bit of an error. This is something that's uh, going to be about 65 bucks on that guy. You know, some people collect just mislabeled, mislabeled holders. Here's one of uh, um, one of my favorite coins. I just, for whatever reason, have always liked the MacArthur's. Uh, one of the only coins that I regret ever selling was a MacArthur. These coins are struck at the San Francisco Mint. For those of you who don't know, that's what the S is. Uh, 1947, one peso. Uh, they mostly come really, really high luster. Super attractive coins. This guy is going to be... A little bit south of 100 bucks on the 64, but just a lovely, lovely example. Really nice looking coin. The one that I had had, had bullseye toning to it. That was the one, the one I can't get back. So what else did we do while we were there? Well, we saw this uh, fun little Ecuadorian piece. 1899. And uh, PCGS MS63, it's kind of a cool piece. And um, if I'm not mistaken, that is struck at the Lima Mint. I think that's why the Lima is on there. But uh, cool looking piece. That guy uh, trades for right around $100 or so. All right, so I'm going to get into some big boy stuff here and in just a second. Let me show you, let me start with here. Let's let's go ahead and look at these guys. Okay, so I was most intrigued. There was a horde of uh, eight real cobs that were there. Some were raw, some were certified. So the certified ones were certified by both NGC and PCGS. The NGC coins were all labeled C salvage details. The PCGS coins were all straight graded, which I found to be really fascinating. So the PCGS coins were like $500. Uh, these are going to run about $400, and so it'll vary a little bit. But I picked out a bunch of them, and they're super cool. I mean, they're just chunky and oblong. I mean... So we're going to take a look at these guys here. I'm going to set them down. You can see them all and keep looking at them. Um, you know, someone had said, well, you should just go ahead and resubmit them all and get them, get them uh, in PCGS holders, and then they'll be $500 coins. And they're not wrong. I mean, the PCGS coins were trading at the much higher level, but uh, these are fun. And you can see the sea salvage-ness of this guy. And uh, this one, yeah, this one had just a super cool cross on it. And the date, so that is, you can't see the one. That first digit is a seven, it's kind of sideways, that's a two. And at the back, that little blob is an, is an eight, the ocho. So let me just point that out one time real quick. So if you can follow through here. That's the seven, that's the two, and this is the eight down there. But this one has a remarkable cross on it. Very strong. Very strong center with these uh, frowning castles. You know, so their castles keep crumbling. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out if these things just all keep getting cooler every time I grab a different one. So this one they had to put in a thick holder, and it is uh, 1741. I'm not exactly sure why it turned into Valley Girl, Girl there for half a second, but you can make out the 741 right there. And uh, super cool piece. They called this Unk Details, 1741 Peru. So we'll see. I mean, they're going to be priced a little bit differently one from the next, but you can see how off-centered they get, right? So this is just, you just have that section of the cross in, on this in 
where the center, you know, this should be in the middle of the coin instead of that edge piece of the frowning, instead of the Mr. Frowning guy here. So super cool, chunky, chunky. And then we have, so we had this one that was uh, horizontal and this one is more vertical. And this guy here was uh, 1751 Peru sea salvaged. This one they fit into a regular sized holder with a nice looking cross on the back and you can see a portion of the date here also right there. So that's cool. And then this this last one also in a chunky holder 1749. I'm just trying to figure out price points on these bad boys and which one I like the most because they're, they're going to be priced mostly on eye appeal here. So, you know, it's in the funny thing is it's like you'll, you'll love the obverse of one and then the reverse will be funky. So this thing you can see it was struck twice. You know, you can just see the, the crosses on there two times and then the castles. So Super cool. So I had fun. I thought those were were super fun. And speaking of super fun, check out these bad boys. So I don't know who really collects these and who doesn't, but um, these you'll have to ch click the link and see how they're priced. Um, they're they're not super expensive, but I and I kind of wish I would have bought more of them because once again, if you're just collecting because you love looking at coins. Um, I could look at this coin just like all day long. It just is blue, blue, and uh, it's lovely. Blue and brown, blue and brown. All day long on that guy. So MS65 brown, I think that one's, I think all of these little guys here are going to be in that, you know, 100, 100 and a half range. I got three different coins that... I bought because I thought they were stunning. MS66 Red Brown on this 41. And uh, that one is really super cool also. And last but not least, there was a uh, this 06, which is, I think, hard to describe exactly what that color palette is. It just... It's almost like that car that you drive by and it changes colors when you drive by it and you're not really sure which color you're supposed to call it. Because this thing is blue and red and brown all at the same time. And uh, this one is NGC 65, of course, brown. And, oh man, I didn't even tell you yet about my biggest mistake, but we'll get there. That'll be for the end. Oh, I'm going to have to make room for my mistake. Hold on, let me move these out. I got a couple more things to show you first and then we'll get to my biggest mistake. Um, so this is fun because 1808 Mexico uh, Carlos IV um, and uh, NGC MS61. I was pretty excited about this guy. Um, this guy's going to be right around just under a thousand bucks on that guy but I rarely see these in this high a grade. And the other thing that you normally see, you get that good look at that field on there. Normally on these, what you see are coins that are either going to be, you know, like really worn, scuffy, or they're going to be some of the higher mint state coins. And I saw guys with, you know, MS-63 coins for thousands of dollars and MS-65 coins for like, um, you know, I don't want to say tens of thousands of dollars, but they were crazy expensive. So... That was a neat piece, and is this my favorite piece that I bought? It could be. So um, I'm just somewhat enamored with finding old Annex soapbox and old NGC fatties with coins in them that are not U.S. coins. So this Japanese 10 sen piece is in an old fatty, NGC fatty, and it's graded MS67, and... I, I fell in love with this coin the second I saw it when I picked it up and I was just like, okay, gotta have it. 
just I always figure if there's a coin that I look at and that's my gut reaction, I'm like, okay, someone else is going to see that coin and they're going to say the same thing. Maybe they're doing a typeset. Maybe they do collect old holders. That could be, right? Um, it could be that, or maybe they just say, hey, I want something different, unique. 1947 Guatemala, uh, another coin that I thought I don't see enough coins with Quetzals. One quarter Quetzal also, this was a little bit of that combination of, well, it had cool color and a nice unk surface to it. PCGS graded 65 on that. I think that's about a $250 coin. All right, I was super excited about this 1609 Wildman because it's actually really well struck for a Wildman, especially from that era for you know, a full size taller, like sometimes you'll see these in fractional sizes and these planchets are so cool because they'll be kind of like, you know, you can just see how they're not perfectly flat, you know, even through this uh, oversized holder, you can see kind of where the metal bends right there. It looks like there's a river that's running through the center of the screen right now. That is where the metal just kind of bends. And then the coin had a uh, nice, surface quality underneath all of the all of the patina and I do like the patina on this guy but I just thought it was a really cool looking piece so and this guy is going to be about a thousand bucks and that guy A58 Brunswick Wolfenbüttel That one was really cool. So my big mistake for the show, uh, some of you already know I have this like weakness for uh, coin jewelry. So uh, this is what happens when you go to a show and they have uh, coin jewelry. And some of you already know also, I've mentioned before, my favorite coin uh, amongst my favorite coins are these quarter reals. Uh, from Peru, they have a llama, and from Guatemala, they have um, they have the volcano on them with the sun, right? Well, when you have a belt that is made like entirely of these little guys. Like, what's, what's a coin geek got to do? What's he going to do, right? Like, now I'm going to tear up everything to show you these. It would take a lifetime to get this many 18, whatever, 99s, 91s. I think they're all, maybe they're all 99s. But then to put them all together... Super cool. So this is probably not for sale, even though probably it should be for sale. Um, you know, but super cool. And I wore it around the show. I just had, had it slung over my shoulder. And it was a real showstopper. I had guys constantly like, oh, man, what's on your shoulder? You know, so... Lots of fun, guys. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I've been the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.